Hello everybody, I hope you're doing good. I'm I'm good, Elaine. Uh, so, I know that I did a long time ago, towards the beginning of this channel, uh, Coleus uh, Kane, and I want to revisit that. That will be the first one, and then we'll do more. But, uh, and just to give you a, a little, up I'm going to actually post the link to that old one and because it's it was in the very beginnings of the channel of course it's not a very good uh, quality of the video because I didn't have at the time the proper equipment so hi Sharon hi Lanka thank you for making it Elaine Hi, Carleen. Hi, Christina. Now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of 101 for people who are new. Uh, there are several colors that I've chosen, and um, one of them is wasabi. So this is all primo, right? Uh, one of them is wasabi and the other one is a lizard in crimson and all this thing seems a little bit too bright it's funny how i don't when i set up it doesn't look like that but once i go live it's boom hi darla hi catherine so one of the first rules when making a cane is that your clay has to look has to be conditioned pretty much the same so that's why I didn't go ahead to condition this the alizarin crimson more because I wanted to show you how to actually do the whole uh, thing as you can see my uh, wasabi is all nice and shiny and pliable why the alizarin crimson is shiny but it's kind of crumbly a little bit and if you remember i did at one point um a conditioning video actually i should link that one too where i showed for primo how you do Uh, how you do the conditioning, how you know when your plane is properly conditioned. And uh, let me get the link for that as well. And that one is actually has subtitles in French as well. So if you're one of my French subscribers and you didn't watch that yet, you'll be able to. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Sue. So the first thing that when you know to put it short, one of the things that I'm showing in that older video is that your best way to know if your clay is well conditioned, you fold it. And I'm going to grab a piece here. Put this back up here so it doesn't get too contaminated. And when you fold it, you look first at the back and if there is any kind of crack here there is a little bit of a crack it needs a little bit more conditioning but you also unfold it and look in the middle and if there's cracks appearing it means that it needs to be conditioned a little bit more now if I grab this and I fold it look what happens so this one needs to be conditioned but it is when it cracks like that it means that it needs a little bit of um, um, clay softener as well thank you for reminding people dana so also for the people who are a little bit newer i'm going to show real quick how you use the clay softener number one uh, don't use too much 
it's easier to add than to add you cannot subtract so you'll have to leach your clay and it's gonna take a while so you're gonna be postponing your project so I'm going to put just a little bit of it I put four drops there are two reasons for that this is exactly how I got it out of the package and I only put it through the machine once so it's gonna get softened a little bit just by putting it through the machine uh, the second thing, do not fold it and then put it directly in the machine because you're going to make a mess. The uh, clay conditioner is going to kind of slide out of the clay, get on your rollers, and your clay is going to start dancing on the rollers and it's going to be a mess. So you don't want to do that. What I like to do is first fold it in three and go with it with the roller over it a little bit and that fo then fold it again and you can see already how the softener starts coming out from the from all the joints and folds and stuff now i know that i did uh, a lot of people ask me sometimes what if my clay is very very old and it's very crumbly and very hard to condition well you have several uh several ways of doing it number one involves a lot of elbow grease uh, it's a good thing to warm the clay up <coughs> a little bit but not too much because you don't want to half bake it so what a lot of the ladies do they just put it in their bra but before warming it up you always have to chop it in very 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 small crumbs uh, and then you add this time you can add a little bit more conditioner and then you just keep you know making it into a bowl and trying to uh, getting into a roll then flatten it then putting it again in a roll and so on and so forth the second way <coughs> of doing it that's not as expensive is to buy a salsa a chopper they used to be eight to ten bucks now they are more expensive uh, I've seen them even for 20 25 bucks but considering the inflation uh, what you have to keep in mind is that if you use your salsa chopper a lot even if you clean it very well you're going to still have to replace it probably once a year because the clay is going to eat at the plastic so oh before i go further let me show you my salsa chopper and this is it and it's one of those itty bitty things you have to be careful not to fill it more than like one quarter your clay has to be very very finely chopped and you put the clay in and then you put some uh, clay softener and you pulse it a few times remove it put the whole thing on top of a clean wrap sheet and uh, put a second batch how many batches you need once you're done you have to I always put my alcohol and you need the 70% at least alcohol not the rubbing alcohol I have these little spray bottles spray it real good inside and on the blades and on the lid 
and then wipe it off with paper towels and repeat that as many times as you need until it gets uh, clean. It's going to get you so mine has a cloudy appearance and that is because no matter how fast you do that, it's got, the clay will have time to start eroding the plastic. So at one point it will not work very good, so you'll have to replace it. The more expensive solution is to get a never need machine. They don't sell them full like they used to. They just sell an, a kind of adapter. But with those you just cut your clay in chunks. You put a little bit of softener on the bottom plate, a little bit on the top plate. You put the, oops, sorry put the clay chunk there and you start pressing and then you turn it on 90 degrees you press you turn it 90 degrees you press until it becomes malleable and then you can start getting with it in the pasta machine now what I was telling you about the clay softener oozing out see there still is some oozing so I'm going to place it here so that it goes inside so those are the the few ways you can and get your uh, clay softened. How long will the your clay last? A very long time. If it's not kept in an area where uh, um, it got too hot and it got half baked. I've had clay, and I think I showed with the Pardo thing, but it's valid for all, that, all other clays too. Um, I've got 15 years old or even older clay uh, conditioned without a problem. Why it is important to condition it? I know I've seen it, said it many times, but I'm going to say it again. Let me first check if it's in a clay softener. You can use a few more drops. Uh, why it is important to condition it properly? Ima imagine on a microscopic scale. Uh, yeah, grating would be good too. It all depends on how much uh, strength you have in your hands. So, as I was saying, why it's important to condition it. Imagine that at a macroscopic scale, you'd have uh, little beads of PVC floating in a soup of plasticizers. And at a microscopic scale, you'll have all those beads of PVC made up of molecules, obviously, and the same goes for the plasticizer soup. Now, when you bake the clay, if at any point uh, you have the little beads of PVC unevenly distributed, that will be a weak point in your clay and the chances of it breaking will be very very high. Does it mean that if you take out your clay of the package and you condition it and you store it like I do in these little cellophane pouches that I put in the uh, fridge boxes like this and they fit perfectly. Does it mean that once you condition it and you put it in these cellophane boxes, you don't have to worry about conditioning anymore? When you start working, no. Before you start working, you always have to condition your clay. And why is that? Clay is a plastisol. That's one thing. A plastisol is like ketchup. Uh, it gets it 
get um, see how I still have some dry spots it gets uh, firm when it stands still and malleable once it is moving that's why in order to pour ketchup from a ketchup bottle you have to shake it and why is that because if you remember what you learned in school <laughs> uh, everything or almost everything everything that we know in this universe has an electric charge so it will be the same for the PVC and the plasticizers and because of that charge once you leave the polymer clay alone it's going to do like kids in seventh grade start going into little cliques so they will attract each other so you'll have uh, little blobs of PVC and little areas of the plasticizer where there's no PVC because both the plasticizer molecules and the PVC molecules are getting attracted to each other and uh, the longer they sit the more molecules will get attracted so yes you do need to condition your clay every time you start working unless unless there's a unless there's a technique that requires that partially some of your clay shouldn't be conditioned too much just to keep the firmness and I usually I do that in my turquoises but why I, I, I can do that without fear that my work will break because where I use these very little conditioned pieces of clay they are very very thin I mean I'll get chopped up pieces and flatten them out. So usually I do mix in the chopped up pieces of non-conditioned clay, little chopped up pieces of very well conditioned clay. But I do that in order to um, preserve a straighter line. Because as you know, when you smush polymer clay, it has the tendency to go wavy and how it's been lately called organic. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, for me, in s some of the cases, organic means, sorry, but I couldn't keep my line straight in this game. <laughs> So it's easier to call it organic then. And the truth is that sometimes when your lines don't keep straight, you get some awesome, uh, some awesome uh, results. Now, the second thing that makes your conditioning faster is to change to a thin setting. to be perfectly perfect because as I work the cane it's going to get conditioned even more but as you can see now it's nice and pliable 
and if I there's no crack very little crack here so I'm going to do the same thing for the wasabi and that is same thing I'm talking about going on a thin setting but before that I need to wipe my machine a little bit because alizarin crimson is a very very strong uh, pigment <clears throat> I did get a little bit of contamination but in the long run just little dots is fine now I'm going to get back on the thicker setting should have hoped that my uh, wasabi was conditioning and then my third color is going to be blush yeah I still have to finish sanding that tiger's eye uh, tiger's iron and of course buff it All right, now what are we going to do? Let me actually... Um, let's look at some coleus leaves. And as you can see, some of them have these specific colors in, varia in variations. Like you see, this one has these colors but so does this one and so does this one and so does this one so we can choose because we are not real gardeners to go nuts over this we can make any of them be quite um, uh, realistic the main issue that you have here is just the proportion of the colors in this I mean in some of them and actually this one has red not uh, the blush you can also use fuchsia instead of the blush I honestly am out of fuchsia uh, this is a gorgeous color and we might try it but let's get on the simplest of them and me look which of them would it be mm. but I can also find a good photo I'm going towards these but let me this one has different colors let's kind of go for this And 
let me add it to the screen. Actually, I do have two that I can add to the screen. So this would be one of them. So these are both um, pretty similar. The one on top has more of a fuchsia, the one on the bottom has more of a blush, right? So all right, now we are going to start working on the whole thing. Um, of course, you can add a little bit of green to this if you're going for something that's more like the one on top. But I am actually want to do a mix and that is in uh, using the colors on the one at the bottom, but the um, shapes of the one on top because there are some like that. I just, it's hard to find and the coleuses are so darn uh, they have so many sub species and colors and everything. So what I'm going to do is, if you remember, I did actually more than once, I did the so-called barbed cane. Um, I don't know why it's called barbed because it doesn't really look like barb, it looks more like teeth to me. <laughs> But that's what I, we are going to use. And for that, I'm going to use, obviously, uh, the alizarin crimson, but my, most of it will be, so the most of the clay will be the wasabi. So this is a uh, two inches by four inches piece and then let me get this through the machine a bit the size ah, that's okay so two inches and it's by four inches so I'm gonna use the same uh, amount of the blush and of the wasabi and half of that amount like three quarters of that amount for the laser and crimson so I'm gonna go four inches and I'm gonna go one and a half inches The order is let's go from the inside out blush and here got quite 
contaminated. But again, it's it's fine. It's not like there are very little. If you don't have huge smudges, don't fret it because unless you have a very very super specific uh, color to achieve, like for uh, for gemstones, uh, you don't have to worry. Okay whenever you're doing this kind of stuff even for flowers even for i mean this will be negligible once i start doing the skinner blend and i'm going to do this and i'm going to do this so this will be my main thing and i'm going to go first straight with the folding in the machine did I manage to connect the camera over the machine? Yes. Does it stay connected? No, because Finnegan finds a way to get in here and blow it. point I can and that still needs a little bit more conditioning but as I said it's fine because it's going to go through the machine so many times it's gonna get perfectly conditioned as long as it's pliable and doesn't crack into bits and pieces it's fine and there we go and at this point, I can start rolling. Remember, rolling makes the whole thing faster. And try to keep the line over line. And it also helps me keep the width under control so I uh, yeah I, I didn't do my fingernails before and I did work in the garden some so it's a little bit messed up and I thought of using uh, nitrile gloves but I forgot about it so I just jumped into the live it's actually if you go on my influencer store I have a section with the uh, nail polishes that I use and this one is from a line called color club and it's actually all holographic and they have it in several colors I might have to add more uh, wasabi uh, why added less alizarin crimson than the rest because alizarin crimson is a very strong pigment and it's going to kind of overpower both the wasabi and the blush so yeah and i saw that's again we're gonna have again a lot of heat this coming week. I'm not happy about it, especially because there's no rain in sight this time. So. And it is fine. Another thing is that for the Kalias, you don't have to have a perfect Skinner blend. Yeah, I had a lot of, uh, as with the heat and the rains we had, everything is growing like crazy. And I have some uh, trumpet vines from my neighbor 
that kind of tried to cross over the fence and I had uh, a spring I, I, I did uproot and uh, pulled up quite a bit of them but now they are growing again so and the trumpet vine can grow fast and I mean fast and it comes like this and then goes down and starts rooting and it's right in my climbing roses I don't have problems working with gloves. The only time I have problems working with gloves is when I do any kind of uh, painting, antiquing, because I like to get my hands dirty. That's one. And the second one is that I have nerve damage in my index finger. So I don't have a lot of uh, feeling in it, especially towards the tip. That's why in all my videos you'll see me painting with this finger and that's not because I'm flipping the bird to everybody, it's because with this finger I don't feel. <laughs> Alright, so this should be pretty much what we need. So I'm going to go with it through the machine until it goes flat. I mean it goes wider. So give me just like 45 seconds. Now what I'm going to do is to add a little bit more of the wasabi at the end here because I want it a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'm not going to add a lot of it, but just some. And it's fine if it's not perfectly blended with the rest. <clears throat> so it's going to be pretty much like it, this. And now I'm going to cut it and stack it. Before I go ahead to put this in the machine in length, that's nice. Yeah. 
you need to send me the link. All right, and before I go any further, I'm going to make some strings of both the wasabi and the alizarin crimson. If you have problems making even strings, and they don't have to even to be that even, with my method, and you have an extruder, please use the extruder, it works just fine. And besides, as I said, it doesn't have to be even. Actually, I'm going to make some of them longer and some of them shorter. So this is the wasabi one, and I'm going to need a an alizarin crimson one. The same way. And do you remember how the barbed wire is done? Let me let me get you a link. It's also an older. A tutorial If you guys follow me on Facebook, you know about Sebastian. Sebastian is a little, it's a teenage cat that showed up about, I don't know, a month ago, five weeks ago. In my front yard, he's white and tan, and he's got tan lines like this, so it makes him very, very cute. And, uh, like all teenage cats, he's very active. So, number one, it's towards the end, I mean, starts the end of the cicada season, so now they are starting to fall off the trees. So, he thinks that I, he needs to prove that he's a good provider. So, usually in the morning when I get out on the porch, I find at least a dozen dead cicadas in front of the door. And I caught him bringing them over. <laughs> and he's always somewhere in the plants, in my flower beds. Because I know if I go out on the front porch and I, I say loud, Sebastian, I see a little head popping up. Huh? <laughs> and then he runs to me, which is adorable. Now I'm going to get with it even thinner. So let me put these here so they don't get all messed up. And I'm going to go thinner with this. Now the thing that you have to remember, what is inside the roll is going to be on the outside in the cane. So I'm going to start with the wasabi rolled in but uh, first let me make this thinner And yes, 
yes, I know the Skinner blend is slightly dirty, but it's slightly dirty on purpose. Okay. Yeah, Donna, you might want to reload. Uh, sometimes it doesn't catch up especially if you're on the app on your phone it's not really mine should be up to date I show 20 all right so I'm going to start with this end and roll it Once I get here, pretty much, kind of like in this area, right? Let me place this on something so I don't have to hold my hand up. I'm going to start, and I might want them even thinner than this. I don't need all, all the thing. Yeah, let me make them a little bit thinner. I'm going to start placing some of these And you want to have about enough that it would go at least twice around. Um, and the plug, if not three times or four times. But anyway, you go until you go a little bit closer to the alizarin crimson. So. as well But you want the wasabi to not go all the way in here. Actually, I'm gonna use a few more very thin ones. And they don't have to cover the whole thing. They can be like a little distanced. And they don't have to be even, just random. But yeah, if you like the video, it will bring it up in suggested videos more. And that would help me with my ad revenue remember I had to go on with ad revenue because life is too expensive right now I can tell you I was looking at uh, few things you know because I had I don't have a lot of necessities at my age and with my disabilities I don't but uh, something that really hit me was 
um, I have to get clean paws litter, cat litter, because having two long-haired cats that have tufts between their toes, a regular litter to just get sludged in the fur between their toes and they carry it all over the house so if I don't want to spend on cleaning supplies and power to vacuum and all that I have to get clean paws and it's actually cheaper than the rest um, but it went from before the pandemic I was paying $22 for uh, two 18 and a half pounds boxes now it's 35 so it just adds up okay so now I'm going to continue rolling oops nice and even yeah we did quite a good number of interesting things on the sponsors lives lately the weather kind of messed me up with yeah, I went a little bit sideways here but that's fine And if you remember how the barbed cane goes, oops. this get cuts in cut, gets cut in four. fourths and bring the edge in and then gently squish it But yeah, we had, and the weather also left me without internet last, was it last Sunday? I think it was last Sunday. Because some stuff got affected by the heat, and they had to replace some transformers thing. And then we also had floods that in some areas, and with the storms, I mean, we had floods because very high wind storms. So power lines got uh, downed in the floods. We had a whole community that was stuck in their houses without power and without a see in the heat because they were surrounded by flood waters with downed power lines, live power lines in them hasn't been good. It hasn't been as bad as Vermont in terms of floods, but hasn't been nice either. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put these together. This needs to be a little bit more squished. So these go together. I know I made it big, but uh, because of the weather, I cannot do uh, distache because I always add canes with the distache, and in this heat, I don't dare to send out canes because they'd get there baked. 
and I do not have uh, Trish's shipping abilities because you know with polyclay play it can be 120 and you're gonna still get your clay in, in good shape but uh, I don't have all everything that she has because she has shipping contract and all that so she can afford to grab her packages thermal insulated packages out of the freezer and just give them to the courier but uh, I, I made it a little bit bigger because I want to add at least two of these canes to a distash. And now I can start going like this as well. Alright, now let's cut it in two. So I got four inches and I'm gonna cut at a two inch mark. And there we go. Interesting, huh? Now you see what I'm doing here. get this really nicely reduced so I can mirror it to obtain one of those lead veins. And now I can get my square pairs. I want to start rolling the cuts through the waist edge at the ends here. At this point I want to get it a little bit flatter like this and then like this so just a little bit because the rest I'm going to squarify it once I start reducing it, but just slightly flatter. It makes the job afterwards easier. All right, now cut in half again. And I have five inches. I have a very good eyeballing about sizes, don't I? Oops. like some kind of worm, doesn't it? Now I can go ahead and make it perfectly square. And no, it's not going to stay square like this. <laughs> Alright. 
And you always want to do this kind of movement because you don't want what's in the middle to stay behind. Because as you keep doing this, the, generally the clay in the middle gets colder, that's how we call it, uh, less moved than the one on the sides. So that's why the square pairs are so good because they move all the clay. Now you'll see, in the end it's going to look like actual real Kalias. And the different looks will uh, come up just from how you vary the, the quantity in the colors. That's all that is to it. It's nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so now I'm going to cut it in half so I can reduce it easier. And don't worry, these make beautiful beads. Alrighty, so now I have a percent this nut. I still had some boo boos and owies here. And I do need a thin blade. Oops, I keep through hitting this. Okay. And why I need to measure? Because I want to know exactly the proportion of the sizes that I have. So I'm going to need like um, three larger sizes. So six, uh, two, so four mediums and one smaller. And I'm going to reduce them quite a bit because I don't want to make the final leaf cane too big that it would hurt my hands. Alrighty, so let me see how much I have here. I have four. So if I go by one and a half, no, you know what, I'm gonna go by one. So I cut it in a diagonal. Done it. This was not good. So this I'm going to have to make it on a smaller one. So I need three more. And 
why don't make them I, I could mirror it okay but colia sleeves are not really symmetrical there are little differences between one side of the leaf and the other so I don't want to get them takes a, a while to uh, reduce but it's going to be worth it and you don't want uh, you don't want it to be much smaller so if this one is uh, pretty much three no not three quarters it's like five eighths this one has to be like half an inch you don't want them too much smaller okay so let's get this one half an inch so I have four of the thicker ones and I need four of the medium ones and one that's the smallest and again I'm going to pull a little bit so let me see what I have now uh, four which is a little bit more than I need but that's going to have to do it all right is going to get even more reduced and this should be it this one is about I don't know three-eighths close to half an inch all right now I'm gonna start putting it together but before I start putting it together I'm going to grab me a little bit of wasabi and I'm going to make a little roll here and I'm going to deform it a little bit on one side and give it a little bit of deformation all right now my next thing will be to pull these into a triangle so don't pinch press because if you pinch you're going to bring only the edges so you need to pretty much press on the sides until it gets more triangularized and you can thin it out a little bit too just be careful because one of the whichever you decide to be the 
and the tip of it is going to have the tendency to go like this as you squeeze it so make sure that you push it back and again a little bit of so these are the smaller ones Which side you squeeze, whichever you want. <laughs> it doesn't. One side will look more squeezable to you. That doesn't really matter which side you decide to do that to. All right. So I got my four one, my four smaller ones, and I'm gonna start doing the larger ones as well. And as I said, there's all kinds of ways to to do this. You can stop the wasabi in the very middle of the, and just go on the middle with it. You can, uh, sorry, backwards. Um, and But we'll do that next week. I'll show you a variant of this and then we'll do another exotic leaf and why do I call call this exotic it's because it's not native to the US it is not it was introduced there are not many native to the US uh, plants that have colorful leaves that wouldn't be in fall just in fall. And what can you do with these? Because you are, okay, I did this, but what am I going to do with this? Well, you can make a brooch. Uh, you can make a miniature garden. You can make a miniature garden brooch. <laughs> But if you do, if you are in the in the business of uh, doll houses and some of that stuff sells really good because there are quite a bit of uh, collectors out there. And so this is my smallest one, and I'm going to do the same thing to it. Uh, so you can do all kinds of miniature stuff for doll houses. And we will do a brooch towards the end of this thing. I will do a brooch. All right, now time to start getting them together. So I'm going to start with the bigger ones. No, I'm going to start with the small one, the smallest one. And this goes it has to be a little bit over the middle here. A little bit over the middle here. And bring it over. So in order to bring it over better, you need to gently do this a little bit. Okay, let me go like this because it might be easier for me in front of the camera. I'm not in the best position. Remember that sometimes the position of things can hurt me, hurt my hands. Okay, I can go like this for now. And I'm going to bring this one again. I'm going to curve it a little bit 
and the other one curve it a little bit and place it here and place it here and the same goes for oh this was a large one never mind <laughs> go like this all the way to the end and right at the end here I'm going to place this And one thing that you can do if you want to make it even more called ESC, you can actually add some blush right here in the middle. But again, this is one way. There's another way I'll show you next week. of the wasabi here and yes I did start hurting if you were wondering I did start hurting my one hour of being able to sit in a chair so I did start hurting alrighty So like for a round one, you start in the middle, you squeeze in the middle and go towards the out and at the edges, you make sure that you pull because the edges always have the tendency to stay behind. And you can make it more uh, elongated or more flat, depends on what you decide. And I'll have for the next, uh, for next Sunday, I'll have already the, the Skinner Blend done to show you the other way of getting it, a different type of collier. So you'll have two different colors, but you can go with the, some of the colliers has the wasabi type green inside and red on the outside. Some of it has barely any of the green and it's got, you saw we looked at photos, I've got yellow and a more reddish thing. 
All right, I'm going to cut it because I don't want to reduce it more than this. Because I'll have to reduce it a little bit when I send out the packages. This is not perfectly perfect. All right, now this should be it. And you can reduce it to very, very small sizes, but it's it has to be a little bit wider than this. But anyway, you get the the whole idea of how it will look like once you work for it and I will uh, keep a, a piece that's not going to go into the distaches so we can make a brooch oh thank you Donna I wish they were still magic but hurt less <laughs> you know there we go this is more in the middle because I get more of that uh, blush in the middle but seeing that these will be pretty much between the size of this fingernail and the size of this fingernail on a brooch so it's going to look quite exquisite when it's so tiny and it has so many details right so thank you so much for being here with me i broke the records at almost an hour and a half being on the chair and i will see you next sunday when we will do i will post actually a photo i don't know either on the channel community or in the kaliana design facebook of what we are going to to make so you can get your colors prepared okay Thank you so much and I love you all and thank you for watching my videos and please don't forget to use my affiliate link for Polly Clay Play and to visit my Amazon influencer store. It helps me give back to the community and it help, of course it helps me get materials. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful what's left of the weekend. <laughs> Bye.